Hi, and welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. On today's episode, we take a look at the new live EP released by Ace Frehley on Record Store Day 2019. So sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Right. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. Today is uh, Black Friday, also known as Record Store Day, and I invited my good friend, Mr. Vincent LaRusa, back to discuss one of the new releases of the day. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, I see I'm you a, all I'm, a, I'm appropriately dressed. Exactly what I was just going to say, too. For Black Friday, we both got black t-shirts. Mine's a little, a little bit kiss-themed, but uh, you went with the solid black. Fine choice. Yeah, I guess mine's more themed of the, uh, of the uh, Metallica. What's the, what's the name of that? The Black Album. I don't know. The Black Album, the Black call, album. right? That's right, yeah. exactly. So I think, or for those final, well, of those Spinal Tap fans, they That's actually right. uh, their 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 album that uh, was released as a soundtrack was actually called Black, like that. Or as right. they said on the movie, no, none more black. I think. No more black. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. very good, very good. Well, today's Black Friday. Let's just jump into the uh, discussion at hand, I guess. So we both woke up today. Yeah. And decided to make a purchase a new ace freely album that came out i think i have mine sitting right over here i think you have yours as well right nice little do. live ace freely live how much did you pay for yours 26.99 yeah i think i took my price tag off but i think i was 26.99 as well so um now i'll just talk a little bit about some of the background on this and then we'll jump into the album itself um you know most fans know that ace put out a video in the 80s live plus four this is actually the exact same six, very nice, nicely done, nicely done. <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the same six songs that were on the video or on the album. Um, that is correct. Okay. Uh, the video did include um, four the videos. music videos. Yes, cool. that's right. Into the Night, Rock Soldiers, Insane, and It's Over Now. That's right. That's right. But the album and was... just for those who... Yeah. Got... No, no, go. For those who could see what I paid in 1989, that's right. <laughs> uh, with, with inflation dollars, this would cost forty-one dollars and forty-nine cents. <laughs> Did you actually look that up? <laughs> of course, you think I just made that <laughs> up? Great. I try to be as accurate as possible. That's great. Show. That's great. All right, so the six live songs, obviously the same that are on the album. One little bone of contention I have: if you look at the sticker on the album, it says "first time on vinyl." That's not a mm. true statement. So five of these six songs actually were released on a picture disc album in, I think, 2009, if I remember right. I think it was like Greatest Hits Live or something like that. Um, the only one, if I got my, my history right here, the only one that was not on that album was uh, Something Moved. So, okay. uh, so, but, you know, be that as it may, it's still a new Ace release today. Uh, those same five songs were also on a CD, 12 picks back in the 90s. I don't know if you remember when we used to do the Expos. The New Jersey yes. Expo, and John Regan was selling CDs. So five of the six songs were on that CD. That's, what was that? Is, that? is that the one that came with an actual guitar pick? Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I have that. Exactly. So, you know, the material itself is not necessarily new to KISS fans, but um, yeah, it's a new release today. Uh, yeah, why don't you kind of show the sleeve, sh show the album. It's got a nice, you know, sleeve here. It's yep. Nice, nicely, you know, thicker cardboard stock. And they call this hexachrome orange which i'm not mm -hmm. quite sure what hexachrome even means <laughs> no, or, but it just looks orange to me yeah but absolutely i guess it sounded cooler by calling it hexachrome orange yep. for those who know what that actually is maybe you could put it in the comment field absolutely this video absolutely now and i like the little labels that they use there also mm -hmm. right I thought very nicely nice. done and the orange itself mm -hmm. i think was would look nice and uh you can see here yep yeah. Yep. And I liked the album. So if you have, since you have the videotape there also, the album cover and the video cover are very similar style, but two different pictures. Right, so once you get your sleeve probably back. From the, probably from the same show, I would guess. Yep. I would gather. Right. It looks like it. Mm -hmm. right, just hold, hold them both up since you have them both there, right? right. Yep. So, yeah. All right, so look, they, uh, I like the way they kind of made them look very similar in style, right? So even the back, even the back. Let's take a look at yep. the back here. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I really. Sorry, like, I'm covering uh, Jamie's face. Yep. Yep. So I, I, I like the, I like the packaging and all of that. I liked the orange vinyl. 
But um, let, let's talk about the release itself, the music that's on it, right? Again, you know, a lot of us have heard the music before. Uh, I'll let you start off here, buddy. What do you think of that? Well, first, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Tootsie, uh, product DOS. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, uh, although Tootsie, if you're, if you're if you're actually watching this, great product. <laughs> that's good. I was never a big Dots fan, but. Um, so what's my? Uh, what did you ask me? What? So what? What do I think? Yeah. What do you think of the the album itself? Well, the one thing I did notice when listening to it, um, it now this is coming from an audio uh, point of view, I guess, yep. of me doing recording for a lot of years. Seems like it's a little compressed. Okay. Uh, I noticed that right away, and where you kind of hear the, the the levels kind of going up and down a little bit. You know, it probably just the way it was mastered from the the videotape. I'm sure they didn't really do any work in remastering any of this stuff. I could okay. be wrong on that, but overall, the the sound quality was good. That just bugged me a little bit, but that's just kind of being a purist. Um, I did, well, it's funny that you started yeah. there. Sorry, not to cut you off, but it's funny that okay, you started there because. Yeah, I'm not the audio expert that you are, but I assume they just pulled the audio directly from the videotape, but I thought the audio sounded really good. I was like, oh, wow, this, I was actually, I'll say impressed with the audio sound of the album. Um, I thought it was going to be a bit less than what it was. So it's interesting that you're picking up that there was probably compressed, and I'm sure you're right about that, but um, I, I didn't pick up on that in my years. Yeah, it's not the kind of compression where, you know, in the however many last 10, 15, 20 years where mm -hmm. they called the brick walling where just yep. here it's so uh they're trying to maximize volume i'm not talking that it's just it's kind of where you could hear where there's certain peaks in the sound where you could hear that's what kind of what compression okay. does and limiting mm -hmm. but it didn't take away my enjoyment right okay you know maybe from knowing this from back in the day let's face facts probably the last time i watched this was on on you know a 19 inch television you know from a vhs <laughs> player yep. through the speaker of the television all right so right. absolutely uh, that, that being said that uh, I did remember the, these versions very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the thing that came to mind, and I know you're going to echo once I, I say I say this. Now, look, I think uh, Jamie Oldacre is a, a, a fine drummer. And for those of you who are not familiar with him, you should listen to uh, Eric Lohan album, songs like Wonderful Tonight, Cocaine, uh, and The Core, which is an awesome tune. Uh, it just, you know, it kind of just didn't fit, in my opinion, uh, on a lot of these songs. I think he kind of wanted to do his own thing. And I'll be quite honest, Anton Figg is one of my biggest influences, as you know. And, and you know, he's stepping into the shoes of, you know, songs like Rip It Out and Break Out, and those signature drum fills and the solo parts he had it. And to me, it's just, you know, it just didn't have that thing that Anton provided. And I've heard some other drummers uh, more so recently kind of do what Anton's done. No one ever does it like Anton. Yep. But yeah. they've kind of captured it more to the tradition of what uh, Anton did. Yeah. So that kind of left me a little, eh, you know what I mean? I kind of remembered, like, when I first heard him, like, oh, what, what's this? You know what I mean? It kind of brought me back to how I originally felt. Mm -hmm. Especially in one of your favorites, Cold Gin, as you, you know, <laughs> will uh, famously describe as one of the boring kiss songs. That's right. You know, he's playing in Cold Gin. He's just kind of just playing the beat through it, you know? And it was just mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like he's not doing a dab that, that, you know, those kind of drum fills that, that Peter did. Uh, I just always thought that was kind of, you know, weird. But I guess, you know, he wanted to do his own, own take on, on it, and I could appreciate that. But that kind of just left me a little flattened in that in that part of the the performances. Yeah. Uh, although the energy I thought in the songs were great. Yeah, so. no, I, I agree. And it's interesting because, you know, I know Jamie had joined the band, I believe, early 88, uh, maybe even more closer to when this concert was recorded. And I've often wondered, did he play the songs like that because he just wasn't 100% familiar with them yet? Or was he just trying to put his own style on them? I have to think he was probably just trying to put his own style. But yeah, I agree with you. Cold Gin for me is borderline unlistenable. You know, that, that whole like chorus, it's Cold Gin time. You have the Peter Chris. It's totally yeah, missing. It, it He's just playing right dynamic. Through. What was that? Yeah. It loses the dynamic of what that totally. chorus provides, you know, exactly. and, and it's a and again, it's a signature part. Exactly. And that's kind of some of the things I felt like were missing in, in Jamie's playing is that he he kind of missed all these little signature parts of the song. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. 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 No, I felt like that on Cold Gin. Shock Me, the same thing during the verses of Shock Me. He's just 
not playing the drums, I'll say, with the same style that Peter Chris has played, or even like that Eric Singer does today. Um, mm. Just, I don't know. But like you said, I feel like the album's missing Anton Fig. Yeah, and I, and I remember when I first bought the VHS tape, and I think it was one of those things where, I, I mean, back then, there was no, if it wasn't for you, I didn't know things were coming out. You know, mm -hmm. there wasn't the internet. And I think I might have just casually been in Record Explosion and saw it there. I wasn't even, I'm not even sure if I remember knowing it was coming out. But that was always cool back in the day when you would go to shop and you say, oh, what's this? And you'd pick it up. And But I remember, you know, picking it up and saying, oh, who's this? Right. You know, so, yeah. um, but, you know, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to pick on him, like I said. For those of you who listen to this record and kind of feel the same way, mm -hmm. or even if you don't, you should go and check out um, his discography, his stuff he did with uh, with Eric Clapton. And also, what I noticed when I did a little research into this is that he played on um, Frampton Comes Alive 2, oh, which yeah. I think came out in 95. And I'm just wondering if there was a connection with John Regan, because John Regan played with Peter Frampton um, on a lot of his tours. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that for sure. Again, people know that. Put it in the comments field. That would yep. be cool to know. Yep. Now, but saying that, I thought the Frilly's Comet songs that they did, I thought the drumming on those were pretty okay. You know, I, I didn't have the problem oh, yeah. with those songs that I had with the Kiss songs. Yeah. And that's where I the, say the it's... Siren? Yeah, I like the siren. It's a nice little effect you got for us. <laughs> um, so that's where I say it's probably just um, you know, personal taste. He wanted to kind of mix up those Kiss songs a little bit. You know, yeah. I think the other part, not that I want to sit here trashing the whole performance, but... um. You know, Todd Howarth, who, you know, we spoke about on the cruise. We were amazed at how great he still sounds, at, you know, 30 years later from, from when these shows were first done. But um, some of those harmonies he did in Rip It Out and Cold Gin, they were just like way too high. Way I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, come on, Todd, just take it down a notch or 10. Yeah, you know, one of the things I think they were trying to achieve, and it was part of the, you know, the big 80s and, 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 mm -hmm. and that theme. If you notice, too, um, at the, every song, at the, at the end of every song that Ace did, like, you know, Ace would, you know, sing the last part and then all of a sudden Todd would come in mm -hmm. and do his like little riffing <laughs> yep, at the end. Yep. It's almost mm -hmm. like he felt like he had to do that, you know, and look, it could just be the way things were produced and arranged back then. You know, Absolutely. he had the big voice, you know, even Ace would never claim to be, you know, a, a pure singer. Um, so I think he tried to give it a little bit more, you know, oomph, you know, to these to these to these uh, performances. Um, that didn't bother me as much. Um, no, me neither. Because I'm, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's just taken it in context for when it was. Uh, but the other thing I found interesting too, and I remember it, and if, I don't know if the last time you saw the video, but um, uh, in Cold Gin, there's a point where his guitar strap gets loose. That's right. And, That's right. Yes, and, I remember that. And, you know. And you can actually hear it. I know exactly when it happens. It happens right after the first chord, and you hear, mm -hmm. and you can see the guy, and, and he, and you could actually hear him chuckle on it. Yeah. Um, I thought that was cool, uh, and I thought it was cool back then. And also, uh, in Rip It Out, you know, uh, part of when he's doing the guitar solo, he doesn't quite execute it as cleanly mm -hmm. as he wanted to, probably. But that was the one thing I appreciated about this record. Although I do think the the vocals were record re recorded. You do? Like okay. the guitar. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Ace's voice just sounds too good on this recording. I agree. I, was gonna I just go find it hard bit. to believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I kind of remember from watching the videos, like, you know, you see that one thing where they step away from the mic and you still hear the voice. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that he didn't overdub the guitar solo and just left it as is, I thought that was pretty cool. Yep, agreed. Agreed. And I thought the version of Something Moves on here, I, I liked it. I thought I thought it was a solid version. i um, not mm -hmm. sure that would be my go-to, but it was good enough, I thought, to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the things to me, though, with this album, I couldn't help as I'm listening to it, compare it to the other live album that he put out in the 80s. Uh, what was that? Live Plus One. And, yeah. you know, I don't know if you did a comparison of that, but actually four of the six songs that are on this album from today are also on Live Plus One. The only difference being Cold Gin and Shock Me. So I think for me, for my money, if I'm going to a, a live album from Ace in the 80s or a live EP, I should say. I'm going back to live plus one. That's just me. Oh yeah, yeah. That has Anton ah. Fig on it, and you know, just overall, I thought that performance was was better. And I always wish, you know, that's one thing I'll say. I wish the album they released today was that concert, the live plus one, only an extended version of it. You know, give us more of it, those songs. It's interesting you say that, and you know, I didn't even really think about it until you're mentioning it. Mentioning it now, um, 
because you have to think that that whole concert exists somewhere. Right? Exactly. You know, so that would be awesome. You know, if we would finally get that entire show, exactly. especially with Anton playing. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm not quite sure why they decided to do it this way, but you know, it could. You know, a lot of these things come down to rights and who owns what mm -hmm. and the cost of things to to acquire those rights. So. Either way, you know, I'm very, I'm very pleased on Record Store Day that you know we had a Kiss-related product because Kiss never puts out any, which exactly. is incredible to me. Although they did, uh, I think it's available today at Walmart. It might have been yesterday, like the Kiss Destroyer Resurrected, yep. which I'm very upset about uh, Walmart because I pre-ordered mine like a month and a half, and I see that a lot of people have picked theirs up, mm -hmm. and mine says delayed. Oh, really? Okay. So, those, so Walmart, if you're listening, I want my freaking copy. All right? I'm sure so they are. Ship it to me. Yeah. Walmart and Tootsie. Um, oh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in that because I was hoping to have it, uh, you know, because we can never get enough of Destroyer. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it would be cool if Kiss someday decides to release uh, a Record Store Day version of, uh, let me think, uh, maybe Sonic Boom. Uh, you know, so... <laughs> That would be nice, right? Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, so I'm trying to think, is there anything else on this album here? All right, we spoke about... Uh, what do you think of the guitar solo in Shock Me? You know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, haven't seen him, seen him recently. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, he's still kind of doing all the same stuff, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I get that, you know, Ace is doing something because, you know, these are his signature moves. And, mm -hmm. you know, the fans want to hear it. You know, the Absolutely. fans want to hear that stuff. And, you know, I thought it was cool. I didn't think it was too long. I thought it was a, an appropriate length. Yep. Um, one of the things I did notice I'm looking at here, the, the back cover, it says production coordinators, coordinators Ed Trunk. And yeah, I, I know he's known in, you know, as Eddie Trunk, but it's uh, kind of interesting as, uh, you know, it's Ed Trunk and John Regan as, and, you know, got to give a shout out to John Regan because, you know, he really held everything as we know now he held everything together for this band for so many years and was heavily involved so you know john if you're if you're watching this you know we think you're awesome and we're so happy that you were able to do all this work with the with Braille's comment and all the work you've done since and putting uh return of the comment which we got to see most recently which was an awesome show absolutely you know i have to, another question for you between rip it out and yeah. something moved was your transition between those two songs brutal as mine was? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. It was. You know, you could tell they came from different spots, but you would think like maybe they could have done this a little. And you know, that goes to show you again. I think you know, coming from the original tapes, if they were doing it in today's day and age with Pro Tools or whatever, they probably would have done like a, a smoother crossfade or gotten some other audio mm -hmm. and sliced it in between. But yeah. It's like the song ends and all of a sudden you could totally tell like it's like a, a, a you know a different you know time frame in in the concert. You know? Yeah. No, to me but, it just it, the editing seemed like it, it, to me it didn't even seem like "Rip It Out" had 100% ended, and then all of a sudden you hear you know I think it's Ace introducing something moved. I'm just like, wow, did my record just? I think skip? it's like that on the video. Is it like that on the video also? Right. I, you see, I couldn't remember. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because it's, yeah, as soon as I heard it, I remembered it that way. So, okay. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I think I think it was the same way. Yeah. Last last thought I had on this, the tempos of the songs, right? So we just saw Ace a month ago mm -hmm. and something like Rocket Ride, we were saying mm -hmm. how the tempo was a bit slow, a bit off. Mm -hmm. You know, these the tempos, if anything, are on the faster side. So I found mm -hmm. myself listening to this saying, gee, this is maybe too fast. The current Ace ones are maybe too slow. Do I have a preference? You know, if I had to listen to one over the other. Um mm -hmm. couldn't come up with an answer. I don't know. There's something about these recordings that are lively and so it makes it a little bit more exciting. But, you know, did you think about that at all when you were playing it? I did. I did. And, and you know, quite honestly, I, I prefer it a little bit above tempo than below tempo. And even as, as a drummer and playing in bands, a lot of times, you know, I may I may be criticized and they'll say, oh, you know, you might have been playing that too fast or you're not playing at record tempo. It's really hard when you have a live energy going on to, you know, play things and i know you've seen a zillion concerts and probably the majority of them that you've seen the bands are always playing them above uh, above the uh, tempo i didn't mind it on this recording i thought they were you know nothing bothered me and yeah. I, and to your point i thought it was better than when we saw it more so recently yeah so taking the whole package then right the the packaging itself the orange vinyl the recordings the drumming mm -hmm. um 
scale of zero mm-hmm. to ten, how do you rate this album? Um, you know, the drumming really is the thing that brings it down for me. Yeah. Um, because I think if if it was if it was Anton uh, on the drums, and as you said from like the uh, from the performance we got on Live the Plus Chicago One, show, the Live Plus One, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I would easily have given it a 10. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for this, other than the drumming part, I still, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I would still give it a nice solid seven. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'd give yeah. it a solid seven. For me. Because I... you know what? Okay. In the end, in the end, it just, I don't know. It's, it still captures a moment in time. And uh, I still think they were, you know, good performances, good vocals. The vocals sounded great. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with like a 4.5 or a five. I think to me, it's just very average. Um, I'm glad I have it in the collection. I'm glad I was able to get a copy today. You know, it's limited, I think to 2,700 copies. So I'm glad I've got one. Um, But if I'm being honest, I might not ever listen to it again after today. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I guess I'm factoring everything in into the entire package, you know, it's not just the the musical performance, but the cover, the inside sleeve, the actual vinyl itself, mm-hmm. all of the presentation. You know, maybe that's why I would give it a couple extra points. No, I because I agree with you. It's not the performance is an average or above, a little slightly above average, but as an entire package um, and price point, you know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Look, right. you're obviously the vinyl Six guy. Point Yes, <laughs> I like that. You're yeah. a vinyl guy. You've got what, like 1,500 different albums or something like that? Something ridiculous? Maybe more? 3,000. How many? 3,000. 3,000. 3,000? 3,000. The signal started to go a little weak there. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure I heard uh, you. You want me to repeat? Yeah. Hmm, that's 3, good. 3,000. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. 2,900, yeah, so 2,900, a 2,900 kiss record. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, imagine. Just joking. So, all right. Anything else you think we should mention about this album before we close it? What's that? Anything else? Oh, you, you asked me. Oh, I'm sorry. You already got a little. Uh, yeah. No, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Well, I would say if anybody could go find it, go pick it up because um, they probably won't be around for much longer. And uh, I guess in the comments, let us know what you think about the album. Uh, what do you think of. Uh, the whole performance, what you think of the packaging, etc., and uh, let us know if you were able to find a copy today. So, on that note, I think we'll close this. Thanks everybody for watching. Rock and roll experience with Mike Brun. Thanks again, Vinny, for joining today, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. There you have it, our review of the latest Ace Freely EP live. Leave comments below and tell us what you think about the record, and please go like my Facebook page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun, where each and every day. We talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. Thanks for watching.